Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Excited to be here today. We've got a fun webinar for y'all. Great information. All right. Let's see. Let's get this room open. Should open the chat. Oh, look, there's Baina. Hey, Baina. Oh, I was muted. How about that? <laughs> Great to see you. Great to see you too. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. Yeah. I'm lighting right here. Oh, that's the wrong way. Let's go this way. There we go. What are you doing? Who's going where? Adjusting my lighting. That's all. Okay. Is it hey. just me so far or other people in? Oh, you know, everybody's coming in right now. We got Everybody's Dayton. in. Ah, how are you, Dayton and Scott? Welcome. Uh, where y'all from? Let us know. Let us know. We got about uh, a couple hundred, 150 registrants to this. Uh, yeah, 120, 130. Yeah, so people should be rolling here very shortly. Uh, we've got some great topics for y'all today. Very excited. Ohio. What is up, Ohio? Are we okay. supposed to say like OH now? I mean, that's what, yeah, if you're from Ohio, you're definitely going to do that. I'm, I'm, a that's what Chris and Chris do. I'm a recovering Michigan fan. So, you, you know, uh, you know, we'll, we'll hold off on that chant for now. Oh. <laughs> hey, Dayton, how are you? Mm, let's see here. Oh, you know what I am going to do? I just remembered I have been having some internet problems. So, I'm going to, turn on my personal hotspot and switch my internet. So I will probably go out here for just one second. Victor, welcome, welcome. We usually get a late crowd here, but every, oh, here, everybody start piling in. Let me get my internet situated. Situate the internet. Look at that, that was quick. That was real quick. All right, perfect, we situated. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, internet's been weird this week. Mine is like earlier, I, like I got myself hardwired in because the Wi Fi just was out for the last couple of days, like in and out, even hardwired in. I was dropping calls yesterday, yeah. and I was like, but today's been good. We're good, you know. Yeah, it, it's uh, the grid's definitely getting, um, getting, getting, uh, it's it's uh, testing, that's for sure. For sure. Yeah. All right, welcome y'all. Dayton, Matt, Scott, Victor, great to see y'all. Uh, let us know where you're from. Uh, where you're from, where you're at. We've got some people coming. we got a great webinar for you guys today. Uh, we had actually yeah, we have over, over 100 registrants for this webinar today. So we are going to have, and listen, the great thing about life is you get to be flexible. And if you don't get to watch it now, we've got a great recording coming out to everybody. Southwest Florida, a little jealousy coming from us, Matt. Uh, Southeast, okay, so a little Naples area, maybe. No, no jealousy, there's humidity there. I like my desert. I like my desert heat. Fort Myers, <laughs> Fort Myers. Yeah, we definitely got some humidity in the Fort Myers area. Uh, but I love me some Florida. I actually spent a lot of time in Miami. So uh, big, big fan. It is a different type of heat, though. That is for sure. Welcome, Brad. I was up in Michigan. Just in just just the I mean, you, you get like 40 and 50 degrees. It feels different, you know, on both sides of the plate. It, it is bananas. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But you know what? Psychology. This is, we, got a lot, we, got a lot of, we got a lot of psychology to talk about today. We're going to talk some GQ. Uh, Victor in Nigeria. Nigeria. The Sea of Victor. I bet they got some humidity over in Nigeria as well. I wonder. I wonder. Um, we're going to get rolling here in just about two or three minutes, y'all. We are uh, rocking and rolling. Uh, we've got people just showing up now, and I'm going to get our presentation ready. Uh, we're gonna be talking about GQ today, y'all. Growth quotient. Uh, give quotient. me a one. Quotient. Quotient. I always say quotient. that wrong. Y quotient. Give me a one in the, in the chat if you've heard about GQ prior to this webinar before. Let's see what you guys got over there. Let's see. The magazine GQ. There we go, Brad. That's about the only <laughs> one I had heard of prior to that. Anybody else heard? So no, 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 no one's heard of GQ prior to this. And so I figured this is a, a very new topic. And uh, I, I was getting a lot of, a lot of requests for some clarity, uh, some understanding about GQ. It's one of our most fun things here. So let me go ahead and get this thing rolling. Let's see here. We're going to go into presentation mode. 
Let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's go. Let's go standard here. <laughs> All right. So share. Boom. Boom. And we are going to get rolling. Bana. Well, I'm seeing that it's, I'm getting a message saying that you've started, oh, there's the screen. Okay, I wasn't getting the whole screen first. All right. Okay. Can you hear me fine now, Baina? Yeah, you cut out for a second, but I think, I think we're good now. I have zero, I have zero internet signal at the very oh. moment. So we are, um, give me one moment so we can be flexible here, y'all. I appreciate everybody. Let's see. This is gonna get this figured out. To... Yeah. Hey, listen, y'all, you gotta be used to this, right? If you aren't comfortable getting a little internet signal challenge when you are on your sales calls, you are going to struggle with your sales calls these days because internet signal. Uh, let's see. We are switching over and we're gonna roll with this now, y'all. Let's see. Vanna, do you have the screen on? I can see your screen, yeah. All right, beautiful. Excellent. Well, now let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling. All right, y'all. So we are here to talk about the seven core psychological principles to increase your GQ. That is not your style. Y'all got enough of that, some swagger. This is our growth quotient. quotient. Growth quotient. quotient. I don't know why that, that one is just <laughs> baffling me today. Growth quotient. All right. So we've all heard of IQ, right? Our, in, in, our, what, is our, what is our IQ, Baina? Intelligence quotient. Boom. Right? And, and that's great for knowing knowledge. But nowadays, knowledge comes and goes, and there's new knowledge so fast. And we got to adjust and be flexible. And we're going to talk a lot about that today. So we've got the queen, of, the, the queen of research and development, the queen PhD, queen B. Uh, listen, for all of you who don't know, our programs are developed with so much thought and effort and research behind them. The tools that go into just the text that's written for you and the way that it's, that it's laid out for you in our programs is masterful. It is leveraging all of the psychology that we're about to go through in order to help you learn without even knowing you're learning. And that's why Baina is a magician in what she talks about. And so we're gonna roll right in today and, and I'm gonna pass it over to Baina. I'm gonna be quiet, I'm gonna kind of observe in the background, I'm gonna ask some questions here, Baina. We're going to talk about what today? So today we're going to be talking about the, the core psychological concepts and principles that we use in all of our NASP programs um, as we build the community. Everything that we're doing within NASP is kind of focused on these core psychological concepts because we know that as we're using these things, it's going to help people grow and learn. And when we talk about that growth quotient, what we're really talking about is, is your ability to, to grow to adapt, to follow through on the things you wanna follow through on and really make things happen. So your growth quotient, like, like Chris said, you know, we, we all hear about your IQ, your intelligence quotient, how smart you are. And you know, historically there are things, there, there are arguments on either side about whether or not IQ is a useful measure. Um, but here at NASP, we like to think about your growth quotient because we know that really finding success, really being able to achieve the things you want to achieve. It's not just about your factual knowledge or, or your smarts or your ability. I mean, obviously your ability to gain more knowledge is part of it, but it's about how much you're, you're able and willing to grow. And when we talk about growth, it's really being able to step into that place of uncertainty, to get out of that comfort zone and do something new, to be continually challenging yourself, continually getting better day after day. I mean, if, if you've ever taken any of our programs or you know you, you follow us on social media, you've been to some of these webinars or listen to the podcasts, um, you've probably heard us say there is no there. There is no end point for growth. So your growth quotient, it's not, it's not a fixed measure. It's not a, you know, it's not just a personality characteristic or you know, the the number on the scale. It's it's how you're able to grow and adapt. And so for every everything we do at NASP, it comes down to these the seven core, sorry, there, there's my reset there. The seven core psychological principles I'm gonna walk through today. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, awesome. I think that gets us right into, 
Absolutely. And just to let everybody know, listen, what you're going to get today is you are going to get the information and knowledge to understand what your growth, your GQ is and how to actively increase it so that you are able to embrace the changes that come with you. And we're also going to give you not only the, 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 the information, because like information is great, right? But, but often how to, how to implement that information is the big challenge. We're also going to show you the tools uh, to help you support with this process as well. So, yeah. And I realized one thing before we go to the next slide, I should probably let people know I have a PhD in social psychology. Um, so that that's where this background comes from social psychology. It's essentially looking at, you know, how the individual impacts the group. So everything from leadership to influence, to communication, all of those things, and also how the group impacts the individual. So everything that you get from the communities that you're a part of, the things that you pick up from, from your culture, from the, just the norms and expectations of you as a person, all of that falls under the umbrella of social psychology. So that's the background that's really informing this conversation today. Mm. Brilliant. Let's do it. All right. So the first thing is, um, if you're taking one of our, especially if you're taking one of our daily conditioning programs, it's it's right there in the name, conditioning, but also for our, our weekly modular programs and even, even some of our community events like the, the our um, sales mastery programs, those types of things. It comes down to this idea of conditioning. And from a psychological perspective, when we talk about conditioning, it's really, um, it, it's a technique for learning and behavior change. If you've heard of you know, the study of Pavlov and his dogs, it comes down to there being a stimulus and a response. You ring the bell, dogs, well, dogs mouths water. So that's what's called classical conditioning. Um, B.F. Skinner came in, made some modifications, started looking at the impact of putting in rewards and punishments and reinforcements, and that's operant conditioning. And the whole idea with conditioning is if you take it as a way to change behavior, how do we get the, the responses? How do we get that reinforcement and rewards in there? So within NASP, what we do within our programs is really get, um, get participants into the habit of doing a little bit every day. It's about showing up every day and making the small changes that are gonna lead to long-term outcomes that you're working towards. So if you ever hear us talk about conditioning, it's, it's woven into everything that we do because we know inch by inch is a cinch. So if you can take a little bit of progress, you have some clarity on what you're working towards. And I mean, people always talk about New Year's resolutions. Well, that's trying to make a change pretty much through willpower. With conditioning, you're, you're getting a little bit stronger every day. Anybody who's an athlete, they'll tell you how important conditioning is. You know that you have to build the muscle over time. And one of the things that's interesting with conditioning is a lot of times it just comes down to the practice. Um, I was hearing somebody speak the other day about, you know, if you're looking at a star athlete, you know, that person, you know, take a basketball player, you know, they're going to hit that three pointer. And yet every day they're still out there practicing that three pointer over and over and over again, because it's not about hitting it once. It's about building the muscle memory in so that when you're in the middle of something, when you're faced with, you know, if you're in the middle of a game and there's a crowd or, you know, these different things that are happening, that you have conditioned the responses in to get to the outcome that you want. And so we've, I mean, that idea is it's easy to understand from the athletic side and it very much makes a difference in your ability to grow as well. I mean, conditioning is naturally a learning process. So you can think about conditioning your muscles to get stronger. And with all of our programs, we're helping you condition your mindset and your beliefs and your, all of your patterns and habits so that those are then ingrained and natural so that whatever else comes your way, whatever uncertainty happens out there in the world, I mean, you know, a pandemic, you know, whatever uncertainty happens in, you know, a one-on-one -on -one sales conversation, somebody shows up on a call that you weren't expecting, they, they end up bringing, you know, a, a different decision maker in than you were prepared to talk to, that you have that muscle memory conditioned in to know how you're going to show up every day. That's definitely part of your growth. I love it, Vena. And I want to say, I want to reach out to everybody just to illustrate this point a little bit. Uh, put a one in in chat if you have had if you actually take the time to practice overcoming objections uh, yeah. with other salespeople. That role playing. I know I used to practice my pitch all the time, but I would forget to practice the hard part, the uncomfortable part, answering the question on the spot, the one I wasn't ready for. So put a one in there if you're practicing practicing overcoming objections, because this is a big part of conditioning as a salesperson. 
right? Because once, mm -hmm. once an objection comes, if you're ready for it, if you're practicing, if you're conditioned to accept them, you don't get nervous. You don't get that blood rush to your skin and start sweating and get uncomfortable and get mad, right? No, you just accept it and you roll on to the next one. You can there. So just wanted to, we've got one, one out there. Listen, y'all, that's something we need to step up on. Let's, let's work on that. All right, Baina, what do we got next? All right. Our next one is identity formation. And this is one I geek out a little bit. My dissertation was actually looking at the, the different things that play a role in forming your identity and how that impacts achievement. So this is a little bit of a sweet spot for me. Um, but when we talk about identity, what we're talking about is it's that understanding you have of, of, your, of your memories, your experiences, your, your relationships, the decisions you've made, the values you have that create your sense of self. And it's your sense of self that has some form of continuity, you know, that, that you are the same person you've been, and it also makes you unique from other people. So it, your identity, forming your identity is really about who are you in the world and how much are other people a part of that identity and how much of your identity is distinct to you. Um, and to some extent, you know, if you look at cross-cultural research, there are certain um, collectivistic cultures and societies where the other is much more part of the self here in the U.S. for, for the U.S. participants, um, there, oh, go, go back to the information. Okay, there we go. Um, here in the U.S., we have much more of an individualistic and autonomous type of um, culture where drawing that line between who you are and who others are can kind of be more distinct. And, and it's, a, it's a range, you know, people kind of go along from one end to the other there. But the reason this identity formation is important, and one of the things that makes it a core of all the NASP, um, everything that we teach in NASP, is really the fact that for so many of us, we go through our lives being told who we're supposed to be. You know, you, you take these messages, whether it's from your family, from your education, from the culture that you're in, from the experiences you have, that say, hey, we want to put you in this box and that's who you are. And the truth of the matter is we have the power to make decisions about the identity we want to form. You have the power to create the identity of who you want to be. I know, um, gosh, maybe five, six months ago, we did an NASP webinar all about creating your sales identity. What is your identity as a sales professional? Um, and the reason it's important to have this identity piece is, you know, there's research showing that Knowing your identity, having an identity that's strong, it's, it's tied to mental health outcomes, it's tied to your self-esteem, it's tied to your, you know, to your personality development, to your, to your motivation, to your ability to make decisions. So one of the key things that we try to do in, in building your growth quotient is helping you form this identity of somebody who is going to show up you know, with the, the internal motivation of saying, I'm here for my own reasons, and you know, I'm aware of the impact I want to have because I have this identity of somebody who shows up as a professional. I have the identity of somebody who is who is providing value to to my clients, to my prospective clients. That you know, whether it's a product or a service or even just yourself that you're you're selling, that you're showing up with that identity and being very intentional about how you're forming it. Absolutely love that one, and it is. It is amazing if y'all think about it. One of the questions I get or, or the, the requests I get in our community a lot is, I just don't feel like a salesperson. Yeah. Right? So I just don't feel like a salesperson. And, and, that, and, and when you don't feel like a salesperson, that, that, that deciphers a lot of the way you make decisions, a lot of the activities, a lot of the way you present yourself. Mm -hmm. And so to be very conscious of that and say, oh, I don't, but I can, what's, how do I close this gap, right? Yeah, and, yeah, and I'll, I'll add in something there is that w the strongest force in human nature is to stay true to the identity you hold of yourself. So if you keep telling yourself, I, I'm not a salesperson, I'm just doing this job, then you're gonna be showing up in a way that is different than if you, if you build that identity purposefully and you have an idea of like, I do these things, I have these habits and behaviors because I'm a professional salesperson. It's not about you know, doing that follow-up piece because I have to, because somebody else told me. I do this follow-up piece because that's what professionals do and I'm a professional. Love that. It's, Love it's that. a game changer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, so I want to ask everybody out there, put a, put a one if you have been challenged with identity before. Like uh, you just don't feel like the, I, the role that you're playing, especially in sales. Uh, who, who else has struggled out there with identifying with the salesperson role? I'd love to hear, uh, love to hear some feedback on that one. All right, what do we got next? Tyler, thank you, sir. 
Yeah. yeah we've all been there a little bit. I think it's it, the, the vulnerability is just the honesty of admitting it, right? Yeah. I mean, the identity struggle is real. Like I said, so much of the time you get told who you are and you wake up one day and go, oh, is that really who I want to be? Mm. <laughs> but we have the power to change it. Sales and we do. Too. Like a, a lot of times we're like, well, I don't want to be a salesperson. Sales people are bad. Then all of a sudden you end up as a salesperson. You're yeah. like, wait a second, what happened? My team struggles with the, as a medical professions, we believe in what they sell, but they reject that they are to sell, to help people. Yeah, it's a very yeah. big, uh, yeah, I'll let Bain speak to that. But yeah, that's a, that's a big challenge for a lot of people. It absolutely you know, the, is. I see that I see it between the, as the difference between influence and manipulation. Oh yeah. You're using yeah. the same tools, but when I, when I'm influencing, I'm allowing that person to get to their goal, their win for their reasons. Manipulation, I'm allowing them. It might be where they want to go, but I'm getting them there for my reasons. Yeah. And yeah. That, I mean, that's one of the most powerful things you can do as a salesperson is help people see, um, that they're making the decision to, to purchase or to align with you for their own reasons, not because you've told them they have to, but it's, it's that alignment and connection that makes a huge difference. And when you have that identity, it makes that much easier. So, okay. So Chris already has our next slide here, which is behavioral consistency and behavioral consistency is an interesting one because it is what we call a judgment heuristic. A heuristic is it's a, it's a mental shortcut that we use. Um, but behavioral consistency is a judgment heuristic that tells us, you know, there's research showing that people are likely to behave in a way that is consistent with the way that they behaved in the, in the past. So if somebody makes a decision, you know, and then they're offered an opportunity to make the same decision later, they're more likely to make the same decision they've made in the past. And the thing that's interesting about this one is that even if they have factual evidence showing that that decision didn't get them to their outcomes or that decision was, you know, if you wanna label it a mistake, they're still likely to make that same decision. So, you know, somebody who loves cookies, but they say that they, they, they want to, you know, make better choices about their health, if they get stressed and they choose cookies, the next time they get stressed, if somebody offered them cookies or carrots, they're most likely to choose the cookies because in their mind, that's the choice they've made before. They're familiar with that choice. They're comfortable with that choice, even if they know that choice doesn't get them where they want to go. So when it comes to the growth quotient, um, in, in creating the NASP programs, whether it's our certified professional salesperson, our certified professional sales leader, our sales mastery community, this idea of behavioral consistency plays a key role in it because we come into it from the design and development side, knowing that people, there's, there's that challenge to break that pattern, to break those, those patterns of behavior, those, those habits that we formed. So Everything's designed to help people identify and interrupt those patterns and replace them with something new. And once we're able to give people those, those next behaviors, those new habits that help support that identity that they're forming from the last one, then we're able to, you know, I think of it as, oh, we're hacking the psychology. We're helping people then use that natural inclination towards behavior consistency to then support the new behaviors they're putting in place. And I feel like I used a whole lot of, of psychology lingo there, but it really comes down to saying, hey, as, as a person, your psychology wants you to keep doing what you've always done because it's your comfort zone. It's what's known. Even if you're miserable, at least it's the misery that you know. And building on the psychological concept with our programs, we're able to say, cool, if this doesn't get you where you want to go, here's a pattern interrupt. Here's a way to change that. And here's a thing to replace it with. And now we take that tendency and take this thing that you're, that's new and help you be consistent with that. And this behavioral consistency, it's tied to how people, you know, make their decisions, what their motivation is. I mean, truly the outcomes that they're able to create in their performance and even tied to, I mean, it comes back to this piece of their identity. People are like, oh, I make these decisions because that's who I am. I mean, I'm a Texan, I'm a Longhorn. I'm gonna keep making the decision to, you know, root against Oklahoma and the Sooners. <laughs> Behavioral consistency. Behavioral I, consistency, and, man. And, Hook up. And you know, and it, it just even goes back to the condition. It, it's funny how each of these concepts layers on in top they of really each do. other, right? Because why do how do I how do I move past the behavioral consistency that I currently have? Well, we go back to the practice, we go back to conditioning, right? It takes time to do little things. Do if I if I am having a challenge and 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 acting consistent with an old behavior pattern or an old me, is it a, a great plan to try to do the exact opposite on my next live sales call? 
No, this is, it's not putting myself in a good chance for-, for Your brain is going to resist that. Yeah, so I got to practice it. I got to role play. I got to build the, 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 the mental uh, strength through imagery, visualizing. You have to create practice. those references, yeah. yeah. Build these references so that when it happens, my consistency is not just one way. Now it's got some new stuff added on top of it. And that new stuff is fresher. Maybe I put some good emotion on that new stuff. And so I'm able to now start testing it, right? Because every sales call is not your final exam either. It's always practice. So yeah. love this stuff, Bain. I love just tying it back into um, our, our, uh, our sales calls here. So I'm gonna go on to the next one here. All right. Oh, our my favorite one. Say that again. My favorite one. Oh, your favorite one. Growth mindset. Growth mindset's great. And I mean, very much tied to your growth quotient. So growth mindset is, I mean, it's a psychological term that's kind of out there in the popular literature these days, um, which I love. And when you think about a growth mindset, it's, it's really the belief that you can learn new skills, you have the capacity to learn and grow, um, that skills can be developed and improved. And having a growth mindset has been shown to be tied to resilience, to how determined people are, to your work ethic. Um, it, it really impacts how people perceive and address challenges. And now the opposite of a growth mindset is what's called a fixed mindset. And a fixed mindset is what a lot of people have when they're told, you know, this is who you are. This is what you do. I mean, there's research showing that, you know, a, a lot of the growth mindset research has come out of um, developmental psychology, looking at, at kids and teens as they develop. And there's research showing that kids who come in thinking you know, with a fixed mindset, thinking, OK, I'm smart. I'm a smart kid. And they do poorly on a test. If they, they do poorly on the test, it starts impacting their identity and their belief that they're smart. S kids with that fixed mindset, with that label of smart, if they get feedback that they did poorly on, on a test of some kind, they're less likely to try something challenging because that challenging thing impacts that identity uh, and that mindset of being smart. However, if somebody with a growth mindset comes in and thinks, hey, you know, I, I'm pretty smart, have a, but they have that flexibility in that mindset and they get the feedback that they did poorly on a test, with a growth mindset, it doesn't impact their belief about who they are. They're more likely to go, oh, okay, well, I guess I didn't study enough or that test was really hard. It becomes what's called an external attribution. That test was hard versus, oh, I'm not smart. That's an internal attribution. So with a growth mindset, and, and the thing is, it's not fixed. Somebody who comes in with a fixed mindset can develop a growth mindset, which is great. So with this growth mindset, people are more willing to take feedback. They're more willing to say, you know, hey, I did this thing that was hard and I struggled with it. That was either harder than I thought or I wasn't as prepared or, or there are other tools or resources I can use to be prepared next time. So as you're developing your growth quotient, it really is, it's your ability to adapt, it's your ability to change, it's your ability to respond to feedback. All of that comes back to having a growth mindset. And everything we've done in NAS NASP is helping uh, helping you develop that growth mindset. And if you have that growth mindset, helping you reinforce it. I love it. I, I want to make a, a little contrast. I often hear people, oh, I have a winning mindset. I have a, I, I have a, and listen, that's awesome. Great for you. And listen, there's no bad, right? And what I find is that having a growth mindset out, will outperform a winning mindset in the long term, no matter what. A yeah. winning mindset, always strong at the point, but once it faces adversity, once it faces something that's not, calculated they don't know how to react they don't know how to respond they don't know how to adjust and move and be flexible to go to the next place and in the world that we're in right now winning mindsets were a lot of the success of the past they built a lot of the unfortunately win at all costs type of branding of sales and the old look at you know, the way things were and those people are not surviving in the world that we're in today in sales they're not people don't trust those types of people anymore with that that frame so i just wanted to put that contrast on the old way and the new way of where we're going. Also our ability to flex and move forward and how much better it is with the growth mindset and easier it is to adjust and to learn than it is just to move forward. So I yeah. just wanted to point that out. Yeah. And one of, one of my favorite examples of, of a growth mindset, just from my own experience, when my son, he's 15 now, so full on teenager mode in high school, but when he was maybe four or five, I remember I was, you know, sitting there reading a book with him and you know, he, he misspoke some word or made a mistake or something. And I, and I asked him, I was like, oh, well, I was like, how he was like, oh, I made a mistake. I was like, okay, well, are you, how does that feel? And he was like, no, mommy, I love making mistakes. Cause that's where I learn. 
And I'm like, oh yeah, if you see mistakes as that opportunity to learn, that's a growth mindset right there. It's definitely that's something great. to celebrate. Yeah, th th those, those are your leaders amongst leaders. Absolutely. All right. All right. So this is concept number five, resilience. Um, resilience is another word that is is kind of out there in popular conversation these days. People talk about resilience. They talk about grit a lot of the times. Um, they talk about being able to grind through like, oh, I'm resilient. I can get through anything. And this is one that I actually like to draw a little bit of a distinction on because resilience is from from the psychological perspective, the way the way the concept of, of mental resilience, mental toughness, it's sometimes called, um, is studied and researched from a psychology angle is it's not just your ability to get through something. It's not just your ability to respond to a crisis or chaos. It's your ability to respond to that crisis and chaos and to move on without long-term negative consequences. So when we're talking about resilience and, and building resilience, it's really tied to mental health it's tied to um, people's coping abilities. It's tied to your self-concept. It's tied to your ability to plan. I mean, if, if you truly have developed resilience, you know, you're able to plan for what's on the other side of this very hard thing. It's tied to um, your, your resilience is tied to your ability to communicate, how you communicate about a challenge. If you have developed resilience versus if you haven't, it's very different. And one of the key things, I mean, over the past year, there's been some chaos. There's been some chaos we're all experiencing. Um, one of the key things I always like to point out is resilience isn't something you just pick up. Resilience is something you get through being challenged. So, I mean, we all have challenges. We can't control all the things, all the things that the world might bring to us or the experiences we have, um, but getting through them and developing this idea that how you respond to that challenge, how you get through to the other side is, is something that you can develop. You can develop these skills of resilience. It's a really important piece of, of this growth quotient. It's part of that growth mindset. I love that. I, I love the, the comparison you make and, and about just the, the grit and the grind and, 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 and how that can be seen as this, this big valuable valor thing right now. And, yeah. No, it's it's the law works no matter what. It's 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 it is a you know it is a principle, not just something that you can do. You know, yeah. so it's, it works at all times. Yeah, we, we don't get a badge for suffering the most. Uh, there there is no badge for being the person who suffers the most. <laughs> you know, I read a study and I can't remember where it was from, but they talked about um, people sleep, and they said uh, when you ask somebody how much they sleep, they inevitably will underestimate estimate the amount that they're sleeping because it is it is a status that I sleep less than you um, and, and you underestimate because oversleeping is a sign of laziness and all these other things and, and it was a very funny thing because you ask people how much they slept and everybody ne never failed they were all underestimating because of that 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 bias that exists there go sleep it's good for you people take a yeah, nap <laughs> yeah. amen amen okay self-efficacy this one's my favorite I mean, maybe identity is my favorite, but self-efficacy is also like my other favorite. So self-efficacy, uh, self-efficacy is really your belief in your ability to do something. And I love talking about this one because people think, oh, well, you know, it's just so woo-woo. If I believe I can, then I can. And I'm like, no, 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 there's science. There's science behind this. There's research behind this. I mean, Albert Bandura's, you know, been doing this research for decades showing that your, uh, your belief in your ability to get to a certain outcome drastically changes the steps you take to make that outcome true. So when it comes to your growth quotient, when it comes to the NASP programs in the community, we know that building your beliefs, asking yourself, well, what do I believe about myself? What do I believe about what it means to be a salesperson? There's tons of beliefs in there. What do I believe about the organization I represent? What do I believe about the products I represent? What do I believe about the, the prospective clients that I'm working with? When you really examine those beliefs and get them aligned with your goals, it drastically changes. I mean, your mindset, your approach, your ability, it, it, it impacts your resilience, your ability to stick, stick with your, your goals and your plan through the challenges and the chaos that you don't have control over. Self-efficacy is really important. It's just not this woo-woo thing of like, oh, if I believe I, you know, gravity doesn't work, then I can jump off the roof. 
I mean, it doesn't do that. And it changes how you show up. So self-efficacy is a very important piece. It's tied to your outcomes. It's tied to your motivation. It's tied to, you know, whether or not you avoid tasks. If you believe that you can get through something, it, then you're willing to step into that piece that's more challenging as, as opposed to taking the easy road and never quite living up to your potential. Self-efficacy is a big one. Big one, y'all. It's a big one. But it's not as big as the next one. Because I take it back. The, the growth mindset is definitely one of my favorites. But the next one is, is by far my favorite. Because the next one is so easy to understand. It's so simple. It's something that we all know increases our likelihood of being successful. And most of us still never do it. Oh. OK. Goal setting. Goal setting is another one that we hear a lot about. I feel like goal setting, resilience, growth mindset are the ones that people are like, oh, no, no, I've heard about that. I know what it is. And I always like to go into my nerd zone and, and, and talk about the psychology behind it because there's research out there showing, it, which is valid research showing, okay, write it down, makes you more likely to achieve your goals. Share it with somebody else, makes you more likely to achieve your goals. Make it, make it public, make it, you know, get an accountability partner. All of those things will help you achieve your goals. And one of the pieces that people love to skip over. I mean, the research shows that it's in there and people are like, oh, no, no, I don't really understand that. That, that might be kind of hard or I don't really know what that looks like. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make a list so I can check things off. It's the piece that having your goals aligned to your vision, taking the time to not just establish a strategy, not just come up and say, well, this plan of action is gonna be successful, but really creating a vision and a possible future where, where you have these, these clear and usable objectives that are tied back to this vision of what you're going for. I mean, especially in a sales organization or in a sales role, your goals might be handed to you. Your, you know, the, the sales team, the leadership, your boss might come into you and go, here are your quotas. This is what we want this week. This is what we want this month. This is what we want this quarter. There are your goals. And you go, okay, well, there are my goals. You, you have this external person, this external motivation telling you what you're supposed to hit. And I mean, you may not be able to control that those are the goals you have to hit as, as you know, your quotas. The more you are able to tie this back into your vision of what does, what does my life look like? What does my career look like? What does my day-to-day -day job look like when I reach those goals? What is, the, what is the purpose that I have that ties these goals back into something meaningful to me? When you have a vision, a bigger picture, something that of this possible future that you can align yourself with and, and be emotionally engaged to, it makes every other step of the goal setting process so much more fluid because you're not doing these things because you have to check a box. You're not doing these things because somebody else told you this is the metric, this is, this is your KPI. You're not doing those things just to check that box. You're doing these things because it has a bigger meaning for you. So when it comes to goal setting, it's not just about checking the list. It's about creating that vision piece that ties those goals into what you want for your possible future and then achieving them. I so and then just it. achieving them. I made that sound easy. <laughs> you have strategies. You have all the strategies. You know that's, the things that work. That's what happens when you do all the work, when you take all the time to practice, when you, when you set the goals and you do everything, the achieving them just becomes easy because yeah. it's accepted, it's a foregone conclusion at that point. And I love how goals is at the end here. It's almost like it's almost like the piece that ties and pulls them all together, right? You're like, yeah, all this stuff is great, but it takes effort and time. And, and I don't have the energy, the, the uh, I'm tired, but then you're like, well, set a goal. All right, well, I want this though. Yeah. And once you set that goal, it's like, well, now I got something. I want, I want this goal, right? And then you share it with somebody you're like, now I said I want it out loud, right? So now I really, and I mean, somebody else knows I want it. Now they, I really want to show that I want. It. I want to show the world that I want. It. I want to show them that I want. It. And I want to show myself that I want it, right? Yeah. So I, I, I just, I love how goals is tied to the end. So I want to, I want to challenge everybody before, before we wrap this up here. Um, I want to challenge everybody. Look, at, we all have goals out there, right? Uh, we all, but we all understand that a lot of our goals are the goals that were given to us, goals that are um, the ones that we wrote down because they were our goal last year or the year before. Um, outcome, purpose, action. There we go. OPA, right? Get your outcome first. Cho choose your whys and then take action. All right. And, and these goals are a beautiful thing. And so I'm challenging everybody on this call to, to, to create a goal 
and to share it with somebody else about how you are going to increase your growth quotient. No, you said it. I'm so proud of you. All right. <laughs> well, you're going to increase your growth quotient. Why? So that when the next adversity comes to you, when the next, there's, I'm not going to say the next pandemic, maybe the next snowstorm or the next uh, whatever, the next <laughs> adversity comes to you, you're ready to rise to the occasion. They always I mean, the adversity could be a flat tire or stub in your toe, you know, doesn't have to be major. It can be, we can have small adversity for a change. Small. <laughs> Absolutely. And listen, practice on the small adversities. This is the point of it, y'all. You practice on those little things. Because when you practice, you make the conscious effort to overcome those little things with a positive effort. Like, I'm not gonna let that thing get me down. Celebrate it. Like, woohoo, I did it. Why? Because that emotion is gonna help build those references. It's gonna help you with your identity. It's gonna help with your efficacy. It's gonna help with all these different areas to start pulling you through to start seeing what's possible for you to grow into and who you want to become. Vena, you with me there? Did I, did I miss yeah, you? No, no, no. I, I heard all of it. Did we freeze up all on right, you? Good. Okay, we're here. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's not you, it's me. Okay. It's not you, it's me. All right, so so listen, I, I'm always about like, goals are goals and they're great, right? But it's, it's hard to put all these things into place. And this is why our programs are what they are. This is why we have the best conditioning programs in the world. I firmly believe that 100%. And we got we got the queen PhD right here helping us create them. So I know I know she's bought in, right? So the purpose of these programs is to help you put all that psychology into play, into day-to-day -day action to help you. Listen, it's, it's one thing to know it all, but to leverage it and use it, that's where the magic comes in, right? I don't know how many books y'all have on your shelves of information that you know that we've never put into practice before, but I got a lot of them, yeah. right? Now, and it's okay. I'm not embarrassed about it. This, it's hard to take information and put it into behavior change. It's, it's difficult. It's a challenge. That's why most people, um, you know, go through life with regrets. And so uh, I'm not one of those people now because why? Because I don't mind practicing and failing. And it's because of these programs that have got me to a place. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't, it was a difficult, it was a challenge. And when I got there now, it's easy. It, it, it's, it's as easy to be me now as it was to be me then. And so these programs are gonna take you through. Why are these programs so great? Well, because not only are you getting amazing conditioning programs that are stacked to build to take you through the process of all the psychology value that Baina just brought you here, but it's also, you get six videos with our CEO, Rod Harrison. If you've not been to our mastery community, if you do not know who this guy is, this guy charges uh, 10 to $25,000 a month for, I think it's an hour, a half hour, a week of, of consulting time with his executives. And you get, basically his best content put in the video for you. You get 45 days of written content and exercises. This isn't 45 days of content that we're like, hey, we're gonna put content out there so we can sell a program. No, this is content put together by PhDs to help get you from here to here. And where's here? This is where you wanna be, whatever that looks like to you in your life. Okay, and we've got certified advisors like myself, y'all have a no big John, Ricky T. We've got some amazing master trainer advisors that learn from the best to train with these guys all day long who are there to support you. We've got sales mastermind group weekly calls. We've got, and look, the value you can see there's 613. These are all light values right now. And I got a guy blowing outside of my door right now, but I'm gonna keep firing through. Um, we, we've got an amazing book. This is our CEO and founder. Six Steps to Lasting Change. Can you hear me, Vayner? Yeah, you're good. All right, good. All right, good. Are you up for the challenge? This guy, listen, if you don't know him, he's known as the billionaire whisperer. This guy's a genius. His mind is basically taken out and put into these programs. And then people, PhDs like Vayner, go in there and take it and put it into parts that will allow you to take it and bring it into here. All right, so we're going to throw in the book from Rod, um, which is basically the the foundation of every one of our programs. It's magic. Um, we have coaching calls with our master trainers and advisors. We have free membership. Take that for free. And you get a coaching call, an hour coaching call with us helping you solve your problems. Now, if you don't know what it's like to get advice from somebody else just to see a different perspective, well, first off, then you're not growing the way you need to. If you don't know how to do that with somebody, a mentor that you trust, well, what about an expert in the field? That's what we're offering you, an expert in the field's perspective at what you're experiencing and how to overcome those challenges for you. Look, all this stuff, the book, the coaching, the, the product, um, all, all, look at it, 600, 400. It's obviously a stack of cash. And look, we're throwing a light there. I can't say it's worth $30,000 because the money just, just doesn't pay, but it is that what you will get out of this 
is far, far outweighs thirty, forty thousand dollars because it's a lifetime of change that you're going to experience. And so, listen, anybody who is interested in taking the program and joining today, we've got all this for you. It's six ninety five. We're also going to do a live coaching call um, as well as the book for you today. Um, why would you do this? It's because all that concept, all those, all that information Baina dropped is awesome information. But you know what? It's hard to implement on my own. Yep. It's hard to implement on my own. So what do you do? You get a program, you get the accountability to help support you through the process. Uh, and, and that's what we're doing here for today. So send an email to us. I'm going to put my email in. Here's Christopher uh, McCoy <laughs> at NASP.com. And I'm going to send that to everybody. Send me an email if you want to get rolling today, and we, I will personally walk you through this process. Um, all right, y'all, that is what we've got for you today. And let's see if I can figure out how to get, boom, there we go. Listen, Dana, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Absolutely. I love chatting with this group, this community. It's great stuff. That's good. If you don't know, Bain is spending her other time coaching high-level executive clients and working on building our content for our corporate clients. Um, and we got her for 40 minutes today of giving her her best stuff. So thank you all so much for being here. Keith, I got you. I'm going to reach out to you, sir, right after this call. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Catch the recording and join now. NASP.com. It's a free membership. See you on the next one, y'all. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Adios, amigos and amigas.